While Embracer Group is beginning to split up its properties even after a recent selling spree, Atari, of all companies, is reviving an industry legend and making acquisitions. What is going on? And it was a huge week for new releases, and we're going to talk about all of them. All this and so much more right now on Gaming News Weekly. What's up, everybody? It's time for another major episode of Gaming News Weekly, the best weekly video game news show out there. Every single Monday, we're bringing you all the biggest news happening in the video game industry. You can check us out on YouTube, Fruit Lab, podcast services everywhere. My name is Erock the Red. As always, joined by this man right here, Full Clip. What's up, buddy? How are you? What's going on? Doing good. Yeah, major, not in uh, gaming news necessarily, but the new releases, by God, there's... I Yeah, I didn't mean list. to lie. Like, I, yeah. I I realized as I was saying that, I'm like, shit, it is not a major week. Hey, it's news. all gaming news. It, it all counts. It's all under the mm-hmm. umbrella. And would you believe I didn't play a single one of these titles? I think um, you can believe that. No, I yeah. would not. No. Yeah, um, yeah. I just, I played a lot of Hell Let Loose still, and uh, I did go back to Cornucopia. It's got me got me coming back yeah i watched your your uh, first uh, impressions playthrough um yeah it looks like a, a well-made um game like one of those uh you know uh, uh stardew valley type uh clones or whatever um very good very cool i've i've been playing a lot dude i've been bouncing all over trying to find um something that that's that's gonna stick really so i'm like i'm hopping i'm hopping between genres i'm doing it all um let's see a bunch more hollow Knight, a bunch more sea of thieves uh i'm really enjoying that having a blast playing that but i got into some some horror games this week that i go through spurts every once in a while i'm like let me check out these these games and i tried one that i've been wanting to play for a long time and i've just been too too afraid to play it i played um the outlast trials Mm -hmm. this is uh we've talked about it before um you get thrown into this like you're like a like a lamp rat and you're like thrown into this thing and like you got to evade these creepy people and it's a co-op game and i so far i've just been playing solo um and then like hooking up with uh you know some strangers so if anybody out there has the outlast trials that wants to because i'm so scared dude so i i played the tutorial and the tutorial is just like a single player type thing you gotta evade um the scary people and hide and and do you know there's there's things you got to do within the the game there's you know missions um but it's so dude there's so many jump scares and the tension is just building the whole time and it's super gory and super disgusting uh there was this toxic shock event that was like you know which is cool they're doing these events keeping people coming back and stuff like that but uh man it um i need I need some someone to get on, chat with, you know, joke around, break up the let. Because I'm, I'm just playing by myself with my headphones on. And I'm just like, what's that? Everything's so uh, intense and so scary. But um, yeah. I know we yeah. talked about this one over the past month or so of shows. Um, is it because it came to Game Pass or PlayStation Plus? Um, No, it was on neither. It was on uh, nothing. It was a game that I... Um, have been looking forward to because I love the idea of it. Um, but then I just never bought because I didn't know if I would play it because I love to, I love these horror games, but I'm so easily, um, uh, thwarted by, uh, how scary they are. So, um, okay. it, 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 it's, it's a fun, it's, it's a well-made game. And I love that they're doing these events, uh, keep bringing people back, keeping their player base up, but yeah, you know, shout me out if you've got the outlast trials. Um, and then another horror game that I tried uh, is a game called Mothered, uh, a role-playing horror game. Now, this is like a uh, like a PlayStation 2, PlayStation quality graphics. Um, 
and it's like it's all about this tension so it's this first person horror game and it's got these like real shitty graphics or whatever um, but this is a whole genre now there's this whole genre of horror games that have like these psx graphics um and you're like this girl getting sent home and like your your father's like yeah you know you're gonna go home be with mother and that sort of thing and then you get there and your mom is like this terrifying creepy like mannequin robot lady type thing um and then it's like this cycle so you, the game is seven days long and as there there's a morning afternoon and a night cycle and you just go through and the, as this tension builds um i'm not going to spoil anything but it is f- f- what they can accomplish with these horrible like old graphics um in in way they they build and this sense of dread and this sense of unease um i think the graphics help and the you know the the sounds and everything are really old but dude it was a it was a very interesting game i definitely recommend if if you're looking for something outside of the box as far as horror goes it's not like you know super scary but it was um it definitely uh was a different kind of style of, of horror and if you know a nice sense of dread so yeah. um I yeah, think there's something just, there with those those re- retro graphics to take you back to the point in time when you were younger and playing mm-hmm. these games on the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got your first real scares out of like a Resident Evil or something. Yes. I can see yeah. why this is working. And, and did we talk last year about there was like a whole indie showcase or something of just retro style horror games. Yeah, dude. There's I, I don't so remember what it's called. Them. Yeah, no, me neither. There's so and, and tons on PC. This one had been out on PC for a little while, and it finally just came over to console um, a couple weeks ago. So I got it on PlayStation Five, and uh, yeah, it um, it's there's so many of them. I got a bunch of them that I'm playing on the Steam Deck even, um, and yeah, it's it's cool. It's a it's a it's a fun little genre. But all right, we got to talk about we got to talk about these games that came out. We got. Uh, uh, like a hundred new releases, and I want to talk about all of them because I did play. Uh, I did play one. Uh, yeah, only got time to play one. So shall we? Yeah. All right. Let's talk about our new releases from last week. All right. First up, the one that I played a little bit, you know, adjacent to horror. Uh, it's sucker for love date to die for this is a um uh it's like a dating sim visual novel thing uh i played and i think i talked about it uh recently uh the first one this is a sequel i played sucker for love first date and it's like a um like a dating sim type thing with these lovecraftian characters so you know you're trying to smooch uh these eldritch gods and uh, they're scary and weird. Now, this one, very similar, except this one has a cult theme, still um, Lovecraftian. But, yeah, there's this weird cult, and there's this super hot goat demon uh, lady that you're trying to smooch this time. Hmm. But um, so far, uh, I think I've only played it for a couple hours. It's only like a four-hour game. There's four chapters. Um, but so far, it's got more, like, story than the first one whereas the first one was just you know dating like you just you're out you're about smooching and that's it this one has more of like a dungeon crawler style gameplay where you go through the house and and there's different things going on um but it does have less less smooching so far there's less of that romance um so you know it's still a great game great story great writing uh and definitely you know if you're into hot uh goat demon ladies um this yeah. one's for you yeah, this this one looked wild from the trailer, and it also has some old school elements. Like it's uh, just the way you move around is kind of that old school point and click adventure thing. Like yes. click into the room to go closer to the room, click again to check out the side of the room or something. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it threw me off a little bit trying because at first I was playing. I'm playing on my Steam Deck, and like I'm using the touch screens like a point and click style thing, but then it was like throwing me off. So um, I figured it out. And it's it is exactly that, and it's great. It's a great game. Uh, next up, Tales of Kenzera Zhao uh, came out on April twenty third on PC, PS five, Xbox S X, and the Nintendo Switch. This is a two point five D Metroidvania um, game. It's from um, Abubakar Salim, 
his we you know we've talked about this a bunch of times in the past uh it's his debut game from his studio uh surgeon studios and it's inspired by um his his grief from the death of his father and um like these bantu culture um african themes throughout and um it's a beautiful game. This is one I really wanted to try to play it because it is available on PlayStation Plus. But I didn't get a chance to, to give it a shot. But like the basic premise is you have a, a sun mask and a moon mask. Each one does different things. One's melee, one's um, like distance. You could upgrade them as you go and, you know, same Metroidvania ideas as you're upgrading. You could open up new areas and, and that sort of thing. Um, so it's got a 76 on Metacritic. Uh, great for a for a debut game his you know his first game um i think that's you know fantastic so uh i will hopefully by next week when we meet again i'll, I'll have some time on this one nice all right moving along Ayudin chronicle 100 heroes also came out on april 23rd on like every system um this one is a spiritual successor to uh sweep it in uh, it's a turn-based role-playing game. This one, oh, you have over 100 unique characters that you can play as. So, um, cool idea there, but it's just, you know, a classic, um, you know, JRPG-style game. So, this one, you know, do you ever get it? you ever think, hey, maybe today's the day I play a JRPG? Sometimes. I mean, th this one does seem interesting. The fact that uh, you can play as over 100 heroes... Uh, that you mentioned last time that kind of grabs my goat a little bit yeah yeah that's a cool that's a cool gimmick i like that i wonder how fleshed out they all are all right moving along another crab's treasure came out april 25th on pc ps5 xbox sx and nintendo switch this is a souls like you play as a hermit crab named krill and um you know, you, you, you find shells to use for your armor, and you find trash to use for weapons, and, you know, it's just an underwater Souls game. Same premise, you know, you die, you gotta uh, go back and get all your stuff, and everything responds. It's a classic Souls-like style game, except you play as a hermit crab, so, you know. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe a little more story and dialogue than most of the Souls games that I've seen so far. <laughs> sure, yeah. It looks like some voice acting. Maybe it, it, it might not be, like, AAA quality voice acting from the trailer, but can't hold that against him i don't think it's a triple a game yeah it might have even been a real hermit crab that they were that was talking who knows <laughs> you know we don't know Good point yeah. um i did hear that this one is you can adjust the difficulty on this one though so you know it's not too uh punishing as far as the soul slakes go next up sandland came out april 26 on pc ps4 ps5 xbox s and x this is akira toriyama's final um you know a uh, thing that he worked on before he recently passed away it's a uh, action rpg where you're you know you're Beezle bub and you you run a crew and uh you're in this desert and you're trying to get water and you're just fighting things and um that's pretty much it the cool thing the best part about this i think is that there are these all tons of different vehicles that you yeah. could have at your disposal and you're just cruising through this open world desert looking to start fights and drink water yeah did you play the demo of this one when it came out yes yeah uh so i had no idea what the, i was doing but ne neither did i but it's all <laughs> yeah. about that that vehicular combat and i think part mm -hmm. of the problem there was that they skip all the intro and, and stuff like that and kind of plop you down like level 15 i think everything yeah. already was so you're kind of early to mid game i'm guessing and not a lot of explanation about where you are, what you're doing, what the goals are, and what's even possible in this demo. So I feel yeah. like we kind of got into there as a sandbox, expecting a little more out of the demo. Yeah, that's exactly it. It was definitely uh, uh, more of a, a sandbox feel in there. But it, it felt good. Um, I think this one's at like mid-70s on Metacritic. So, um, you, know, not, uh, you know, not winning any awards, but uh, a fun game to, to enjoy. Yeah. And so. it certainly looks more fleshed out in the full version. And Absolutely. Uh, I, I think I could get down on this. I'd probably wait for a sale on it, though. Yeah. Have you watched any of the the show? The, no, the I heard one that came out. Like on? a Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Re did it come out about the same time as the demo, or has it been out for a while? Um, It, it came out recently. So from my understanding, now I could be entirely wrong because I'm just kind of piecing this together from things I've seen. I think it was either a show or a movie previously, maybe in Japan. 
Um, and then recently came over to the States. And if it was a movie, they turned it into a show or vice versa. I don't remember exactly, yeah. but it's, it's new and it is available on one of the streaming services. So I keep meaning to, to check it out and, and see what it's all about because I do. Um, it looks, it looks, I love the art style and the characters and, you know, his previous stuff is, you know, obviously is, is quality. So, um, you know, maybe that will lend something. If you, if you watch the, the anime, maybe it'll, you know, make the game that much more enjoyable. All right. Next up, Manor Lords came into early access on April 26th on PC uh, and will be out on Xbox sometime uh, soon. This one, I was like, if any, if you have played any of these, it's this one because I know you've talked about this one before and how it, it looks interesting. It's a medieval city builder um, with real time tactics uh, uh, added onto it. It's historically accurate for the late 14th century. Um, and it looks really, really well made. It's this very detailed city building where you could, you know, you could get right into the, to the fine details and then zoom out to see your whole city. Um, you got to do all the building and then go get resources. And then on top of that, you have to train, uh, armies and then defend the, the city. So, uh, very, very cool game. And it's just in early access. Uh, it's been, you know, having a huge response on steam. I think there was over like a hundred thousand people playing it on steam the other day. Um, and the reviews, early access reviews have all been great. So, um, I'm, I'm interested to, I want to watch some of this. I never get down with any of these dude, especially on this level of detail. I, I I have too much anxiety, but I'm I'm looking forward to watching some, some gameplay of this one because it does look like you could do anything in it. Well, I definitely watched the before you buy video over on YouTube. Um, it, it, a couple things to note, this was mostly made by one person. I didn't know that, but that's crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and the second, why that's so notable is because it's just crazy complex. Mm -hmm. Like the way that you, you tax citizens and things like that. And the way it's just, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Yeah. So much to it from, from what I've seen and how amazing is it that like, I mean, we're getting all of these great games coming out recently. Um, between, you know, Pal World, um, Hell Divers, this game from these small studios that are like putting out these a huge, amazingly detailed, uh, well done games. And then like, you know, triple A games now, it's kind of like you're, you're, we're staying away from those. So it, it's interesting how it's shifted. All right. And last up, Stellar Blade came out April 26th on PS5. This is, um, you know, it's basically just an action game, action role playing game. Uh, it's this beautiful post apocalyptic world um, with like a hot robot lady that, you know, wants to fight stuff. So, you know, what more could you ask for? Uh, it's a little bit soulsy, a little uh, near automata, um, where it's got just this tight, real stylish combat, fast paced, everything, um, you know, is moving real fast, parries and blocks and, and that sort of thing. Um, but this one has been, you know, high on my uh, wish list for a while. I'm looking forward to, to checking it out. But right now I got no time and uh, I'm I'm not going to buy a, a, a full price game that I'm not going to play because I, I learned my lesson. I bought Dragon's Dogma 2 and I just haven't gotten into it as much, you know. So I'm just going to chill out and just let it happen when it happens, you know. Yeah, and I'm wondering where this is going to land on Metacritic within the next week or so. Um, I hear good things. I hear I hear bad things too. I hear that it's not worth the seventy dollar price tag, but um, I also hear that uh, it's it's better than people expected. Yeah, yeah. Right now it's at eighty two on Metacritic, um, so definitely above what I expected as for uh, scores. But yeah, there there's a lot of like tens and nines that I'm seeing. Uh, people saying it's a great game, super stylish and fun. Uh, and what kind of we've been missing in games, you know, we don't have these ton of these like fun, uh, action role-playing games anymore. Remember like when they were, that's all they were devil may cry and, uh, mm -hmm. dark siders and, uh, you know, all these things. And now you don't get those that often. It's all these very detailed, um, full role-playing games and that sort of thing. So yeah, I like the fun stylish ones. Um, like Bayonetta and that sort of thing every once in a while. So um, 
I'm I'm excited to check this one out at some point. But um, that is it for our new releases. There are a bunch more even still. Uh, Top Spin, the tennis game, uh, looks fantastic. Fallout 4 came to next gen. Um, a bunch more other great looking indie games. So I don't know why everybody decided this was the week that they're going to put out their games, but uh, it happened and uh, it's exciting. Maybe which, it's a tax return season or something. Yeah, maybe everybody's spending, uh, which is good because yeah, like we said, it's a, it's a slow news week. So um, at least we, we had that to talk about. One more thing we could get right into before we talk about our news of the week. How about our top five of the week? Top five. It's a top five. Top five. All right. So this week we, um, I looked at that all all the the types of games that were available uh, here in our in our new releases, and there's every single type of game. You know, your dating sim, your JRPG, your uh, city builder. So I spun the big. I got a giant wheel of genres at home, and I spun the wheel. Gaming News Weekly wheel of genres to see what our top five is going to be this week. And it landed on action role-playing games. So, so we got this, the um, sand game. What the hell was that sand game that I just talked about? Um, Sandland. And Sandland, Stellar Blade, both uh, action role-playing games out this week. So we want to talk about the top five, our five favorite action role-playing games of all time. And it's a good list. Are you ready to do it? I'm ready. All right. Number five. I don't even know if you've ever heard of this game, but it's one of my favorites, which is why it made the list. Uh, Kingdom Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Have you ever heard of this game? Can't say oh, that. My goodness. So this is a game that literally caused a studio to, to go bankrupt. Um, it was this. Sounds great. Um, <laughs> it was this. But it's really like this is an another under we talked about underrated games last week this is an underrated one um but it's got the this amazing lore but it's this huge open world um action game where you can it's all about the the gameplay for this one it's super stylish you could choose how to um you know create your character if they want to be a um you know a, a thief or a barbarian and then you get like you're constantly getting new weapons and you're getting new abilities throughout the whole thing where at the end of the game, you're feeling like you're like an unstoppable um, monster. And I, I platinumed it. Uh, this initially was out on the PlayStation three. I got a 100% of it then. Uh, and then it came out. Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning came out in 2020. And I got that um, on the PlayStation five and on, steam deck and i'm in the middle of playthroughs it doesn't once i got the the remastered version of it, it doesn't hold up as well as i remember it but um it's still a great game and deserves to make it on this list so i'm gonna probably cut the half of that out because i went on and on forever but you know it's at least we could talk about it number four fallout four this one, um, you know, was high up on your list. Tell me, tell me why you added this one. Um, you know, well, first of all, recency bias. Second mm -hmm. of all, when it comes to action RPGs, I'm not 100% sure about this genre. So I had to look up like other lists and what is considered an action RPG versus an action adventure versus a regular RPG. Mm -hmm. So some of the lists that I found included Fallout 4. Mostly what my list comes down to is what I've played before. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm a basic bitch, so Fallout 4, Skyrim, those are the kind of things that made it onto my list. But I did love Fallout 4. Um, one of my buddies who, who loves it played every single ending. I don't have that kind of time in the day to do that, so I just went with the one ending. I think it was the one with the Brotherhood of Steel, and I, I guess nice. I won't spoil it because a lot of people are replaying Fallout 4 right now. Sure. Even Absolutely. so much that it like broke Nexus Mods, one yeah. of the big mod repositories out there with the popularity of the show. Crazy, crazy. Great pick for number four. Uh, number three, Bloodborne. Um, again, we, I've talked about it. It's showed up on multiple lists before. It's my favorite um, of the Souls-like games, my favorite from software game. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, you'll see it on this list. I love the lore of it. I love uh, the setting, the style. 
everything is is fantastic you know we want a bloodborne remake bloodborne 2 make it happen uh number two skyrim of course has to make the list right it's probably one of the greatest fantasy action role-playing games ever made um right i mean it's like skyrim and gta 5 are the only games that i know of that have like 10 years of steady sales and then it's worth their time to do like a reboot or not a reboot uh yeah what would you even call that like a uh, next gen uh, remake right just a re-release they're kind of putting it out yeah. on on everything yeah so it, it's crazy how many different uh, a buddy of mine loves this game like it's like they're and they literally buy it every time it's released yeah. on another thing and just like fallout 4 talk about modability yeah yeah that's pretty insane all right and then number one We've got a tie, and they are very similar uh, games. So, Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring. It's just like we couldn't decide which From Software game was the better action role-playing game. So, we're like, let's just put them both in there. Um, Both very similar games in terms of style and and substance. Um, You know, Elden Ring is just this huge uh, world. that I, I think most people would say it's probably the best of the from software games. Um, But Dark Souls 3, like they really nailed so much of that, the magic and the, the world. And and so I I don't know, but you you can't get to Elden Ring, I believe without Dark Souls, um, you know, any of the the Dark Souls. So um, I think they, I think they perfectly go hand in hand sitting there on the throne at number one. And these are genre defining games, even though they kind of fit into that subcategory of souls like games. I mean, they are they're the John, the subgenre is named after them. They're that right. genre defining, but you're going to see so much of this, especially with Elden Ring and how popular that was over the past year. The grander uh, genre of action RPGs are going to be taking more elements from them, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think we're already seeing it, you know, showing up in, in, in a lot of things. So, um, but yeah, that was a that was a fun list. Uh, a lot of games could, I mean, Witcher, Cyberpunk, these are all you know games. That, Horizon, God of War, these are all amazing action role playing games that could have easily made a list and probably would have made a top ten list. Um, but yeah, these are our top five, and I will defend to the death Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning being on here over Cyberpunk or Witcher. So bring it, bring it on. All right get back to the news and back to our news of the week all right first up some sad news for uh all the all the blizz blizz heads blizzcon has been canceled for like the first year like ever um blizzard has decided to not uh hold blizzcon in 2024 uh, they put out a press release. They said, uh, after careful consideration over the last year, we at Blizzard have made the decision not to hold BlizzCon in 2024. This decision was not made lightly, as BlizzCon remains a very special event for all of us, and we know many of you look forward to it. While well, we're approaching this year differently, and as we have explored different event formats in the past, rest assured that we are just as excited as ever to bring BlizzCon back in future years. So, um, yeah, just a lot going on over there you know, uh, the merger and that sort of thing. And, um, but, and they got a lot to talk about too, which is a big surprise. They got the, the new world of Warcraft, um, expansion coming out, Diablo four expansion and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so I'm sure we'll hear about more of those going forward. Um, so yeah, I don't know where the, the con, the, the, uh, the, um, cosplayers are gonna go this was always a big cosplay thing oh, you know gonna have to go to comic-con or something yeah yeah i was i was kind of wondering is it was it lack of things going on like game updates and stuff worth talking about or was it maybe um just you know a decline in in the fandom of like world of warcraft because it's, it's what has it been 20 years it's crazy and i think yeah. people, i know a lot of people are still into it but i wonder if those numbers are where they used to be so can they still get the crowd that they had years ago Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, you know, will always go to BlizzCon. It's it's just that event. It's just something that's always been there. 
Um, but yeah, you're right, dude. There hasn't been any new. We haven't had any new announcements, new games or anything uh, from Blizzard in a while. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, it does come back next year, and in, in what format, and, and what they're they're doing about it. So, um, all right. Next up. So recently, we talked about. So we're going to talk about Embracer Group. Tr- you know, this is a trigger warning to for everybody. More Embr- Embracer Group talk. Um, but recently, we talked about how they they put out a statement saying we're done restructuring. We're on, we're ready. We're on the path. And then literally, like a week. Two weeks later, not only do they do more restructuring, but they completely change the company from one company to now three companies. Um, So here, let's get into it. So they announced recently that they're going to split itself into three distinct game and entertainment companies. And they are uh, Asmodee Group, Coffee Stain and Friends, and Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends. Terrible names. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think they could have Strange. You know, worked a little harder on those. Um, but each one, uh, it says, each entity uh, is set to better focus on their respective core strategies and offer more differentiated and distinct equity stories for existing and new shareholders. So basically, the breakdown is this. Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends, um, It's going to be a creative powerhouse in AAA game development and publishing that will retain ownership of the Dead Island, Killing Floor, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Tomb Raider, and Lord of the Rings IPs. Uh, Asmodee Group is a new arm dedicated to publishing and distributing tabletop games. Uh, Their existing catalog includes Ticket to Ride, Seven Wonders, Catan, Exploding Kittens, uh, and they're also going to be licensing uh, and developing tabletop games based on lord of the rings marvel game of thrones and star wars so uh that's big and then copy stain and friends is the diverse gaming entity that will focus on indie mid-market and free-to-play games um properties on that one include deep rock galactic goat simulator satisfactory Wreckfest, teardown and valheim so that's basically you know the way that it's they're, they're figuring it out they're breaking it down what do you think of this whole thing? Yeah, that's wild. You know, concerning Asmodee and all of those tabletop games, I don't know that much about tabletop games, but those are some big, big names mm-hmm. uh, in tabletop gaming. And I had no idea they were even under Embracer Group. And I'm kind of wondering no. what else do they own that we don't even Dude, realize. Right? It's insane how much stuff that Embracer has acquired um, in their big spending spree over the past, you know, five years. Yeah. And, and so I've seen like, the idea that this is so they can diversify these things into different umbrellas so that they can sell those off possibly because I think only one of these is remaining as the actual Embracer group, which will be renamed. I read something about there. Yes. This whole thing's a little convoluted. Yes. So Embracer group is done. There's no more. We're not going to, we don't have to say that anymore. I'm sure we'll, for a while we'll probably have to say formally, you know, Embracer group, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, that's done. Uh, he said, um, uh, he being uh, Lars Wingefor as the CEO said um, when asked about if the name dropping the name was to distance from the controversy and backlash, he said, not at all. These names, these name changes are strategic decisions aimed at allowing each new entity to develop its own unique brand identity tailored to its specific business focus and to maximize its potential in the market, which I don't buy. I call bullshit. Embracer has been, a blight they have been you know no one wants no one likes embracer group no one has ever liked no one in the industry likes embracer group no one likes embracer group so i definitely think that like they're like all right let's call us a different name you know yeah yeah i don't know i mean it it, what it is in general is is not such a terrible thing if they were actually like bringing in these indie studios that they're acquiring giving them some serious backing so that they can make games that we love but when you go and you buy up half the industry and then you're like piecing it out, selling it off for less than you, it just seems like really dumb business moves. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, shutting down studios is not really what we want to see. Right. Yeah. To go out, buy all these things. Initially, yeah, I had some excitement. I had some um, faith in this whole thing because they were buying up stuff that 
I was excited to, for them to bring back, you know, stuff that otherwise might have just gone away, you know, and, and then I was excited. But then I saw how they were handling it by just buying it and then either, you know, not doing anything with it or then, you know, uh, laying it off or, or selling it or, you know, all this stuff. It just it never left a, a good taste in my mouth how Embracer handled uh, any of these acquisitions that they, they had. So um, we'll see what this means you know going forward um but i guess it's got to be better right you know yeah so i don't know we'll see i'm sure we'll have more uh as this whole thing develops i don't know there's a there's a great article on um gamesindustry.biz a great interview with the ceo ceo um where he talks about like all the decisions and, and what their plans are so if you're interested go check out that article um but yeah, there's, I mean, there's so much more as far as like the reasons for, you know, doing it as far as a business reason and, and staying money because they talked about how they're like 1.5 billion in debt. Um, and a huge part of that debt is the, from the, when they purchase it as Modi, the tabletop group, but they also expect them to have like the quickest turnaround. It's a, it's this whole thing that I don't really understand the business side, but it was interesting. So Go check out that article. All right, and last up, Atari is continuing its uh, its comeback here. They're they're really uh, you know blossoming into uh, a big time company here, and by doing so, they're bringing back a name that I don't know if anybody is familiar with. Infogrames. Have you ever heard of this before? It sounds kind of familiar, but I really don't know what it is. Only when I went and looked into the actual games that they had published in the past that I yeah. realized, hey, this is. These are kind of legendary games here. Yeah, so I had to uh, also Google it because, you know, everybody was like, Infogrames is back. And I'm like, first of all, I don't like saying it. I feel like I should be yeah. saying games, but then there's games? an R in there. Terrible. Yeah, Grames. Um, but I found out that, so the current Atari that we talk about is actually Infogrames. Um, but they, so Atari left the business um, a company purchased them, um, Hasbro, Hasbro Interactive purchased them, um, and then they were purchased by Infogrames, and then they, instead of being Infogrames or Hasbro Interactive, they made Atari their forefront, the name that they were going by. Um, and then Atari, um, you know, went bankrupt, and sold a bunch of assets to stay afloat. This was 10 years ago. And now they've been coming back ever since kind of slowly, um, you know, due to nostalgia and kind of making some, some pretty uh, interesting business decisions. They're, they're kind of back in the, in the gaming uh, lexicon again. And now they've bought this, uh, well, this infogrames they're, they're putting this, this name forward. And the reason for that is it's going to be a, um, you know, it's going to be buying IP and um, publishing games under this Infogrames category. So the first one that they are purchasing is to Totally Reliable Delivery Service. Um, so that is the first game under the Infogrames catalog. So, um, yeah, we'll see what that what, what happens with that. Yeah, I think they've also got some new like mini consoles and things like that. Mm. Uh, con we, we've talked about stuff over the past year where there's like a new Atari coming out that looks like a particular one. I don't know all the 7600s and the differences between these. It's a little before my time, but one that can play like all of the, uh, all your retro games. If mm -hmm. you can go out there to the pawn shop and find some physical yeah. copies of them. Yeah. It's crazy how they're still like putting those, those retro Atari consoles out there and they're, People are still buying them, man, but it's uh, it's, pr it's pretty crazy. But yeah, Atari is, uh, they're doing their thing. And I'm interested to see what is the next IP that um, Infogrames does acquire and, and tries to, you know, bring back to life. So uh, that's always fun. Hopefully there's some, some good stuff. And that is it for our news this week. All new releases, not much on the news front. Uh, is there anything else you want to chat about? We got time. Let's see, I believe there's going to be an Xbox showcase on Monday, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, don't waste your time watching that. Come back next Monday. Yes, we'll tell you everything you need to know. 
Yeah, it's so weird that they're doing it on a – it's always worked out for us in the past where they've done it on the weekend or something. We could, you know, chat about it and pop it in the news then uh, for the, you know, a couple of days later. And now they're, they're really jamming us up, putting it out on a release day. Um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll, you know, throw a, a, a highlight vid or something over there on the TikToks. Um, but otherwise, yeah, stop back next week and we'll be chatting out, uh, chatting about everything that is announced at that uh, Xbox showcase. Uh, hopefully we get some good, uh, some good stuff. I'm, I'm excited for, oh, yeah. you know, frothing. The Xbox the Two. Moment. Yes. The Xbox 720. Yep. That's going to be it. We should take bets on what the next Xbox is, is named and whoever gets closest. Um, I don't. I feel like we wins. couldn't do it. It'll be like Xbox Blueberry or something. Yeah, or it's just going to be like a box. <laughs> Triangle box. <laughs> Where it's like, what? Wait a minute. We're getting away from X all of a sudden? X. Yeah, maybe that's the thing. They don't want to be associated with X anymore. So they're like, listen, we're calling it the Twitter box. Oh, God. Oh geez, that was that's going the opposite way. All right, we got to get out of here. Um, yeah, well, thanks, thanks for for being here. Thanks for being a friend. We appreciate you uh, for checking out this fine episode of Gaming News Weekly. Whether you're you're listening to it on the on the podcasts where you know wherever you may find podcasts, or if you're watching it on the the YouTube's at Pop Culture Playground, um, or on Fruit Lab, if you're over there, Fruit Lab watching it, uh, it's, which is a great website you should check out, where you can earn uh, cryptocurrency by watching videos and posting content. Um, all three great places to enjoy this here show. Um, and then while you're on YouTube, go check out uh, Full Clips Gaming Channel there, uh, Game Facts, G A M E F A X, posting some fun gameplay videos over there and definitely while you still can find us on the tiktok um you know it's it's where everything's happening you know i think we've got uh, a short period of time to to grow our audience there before we get shut down um because i did just see that the owners said they will rather be shut down in the united states than sell the company so it seems like sure. it's Seems like it may happen. I don't yeah. know. But why, why would you create your own competition? Yeah. Yeah. But money is, you know, is powerful. We'll see. I'm sure somebody out there will would like to buy it. Uh, I did see that Vince McMahon recently cashed in all his uh, shares of uh, the WWE and TKO. So he's got a shit ton mm. of money right now. So, you know, take it from China and give it to a creepy, like, uh, right. sex pest. Yeah, he's he's got a really good reputation right now. Yeah, sure yeah. Go well. I mean, that's the kind of shit that the politicians love. You know, it's like China bad, sex old sexual predators with billions of dollars. Good. So you know, we could go on and on, but uh, we won't. And uh, we're gonna get out of here. So thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.